there to Nashville and preparing for the game. All right, thank you, Coach. We'll start with um, Gene Wang. Hey, Mike, just how, how, obviously you knew you'd be bill eligible, you know, a few weeks ago, but just how gratifying is it to be in this position, given kind of the ups and downs of the season? You know, you always and you get obviously a few more weeks to, to play with these guys and help build for next year. Just all that. How much how gratifying is that? Yeah, I mean, as I've said before, the opportunity to continue to develop our team through these practices that we're able to get because of uh, being bowl eligible for the third straight year, uh, you just can't put a price tag on it. Um, these games have propelled a lot of the, the the players that have had made plays for us this year. Uh, games like this have propelled those guys. And, you know, I can think back two years ago to the Pinstripe Bowl where guys like Antoine Littleton and and, and Ramon and uh, Roman Hemby both kind of came onto the scene a year ago. Octavian Smith making plays, Punch uh, Knotts making plays for us. So great opportunity. We're I know we're all excited about it. Um, it's a December 30th bowl. It's in Nashville. Um, it helps elevate our program. And as, as a follow-up, have you had conversations with some seniors or players who might be leaving to the next level, whether they're going to play? What, and what have those conversations been like, or have they have they started yet? Yeah, you know, we, we've, we've met. We've had some meetings with some guys that have decided, you know, that, that are planning on playing in the game. Some guys are still trying to decide. We're waiting uh, to see what bowl game and what opportunities we we had. So I'm sure we'll be able to probably solidify who will be around, you know, the portal windows opening up tomorrow. Um, and so, you know, it's still a lot of moving pieces there, but we'll, we'll have a we'll have a good amount of our guys prepared to go down there, play and, and put on a great, great show. And do you anticipate Tal Talia being being part of those guys who are going to play in the game? I would anticipate it, but again, until I get back and now that we had the announcement, have not had the opportunity to speak to a bunch of these guys. But it was my understanding that Talia expects to, uh, wants to and expects to play. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll go to Varun next. Coach, uh, you mentioned the transfer portal there briefly. Obviously, a couple big names, uh, Corey Deitches, Rico Walker, Jason Barham going into the transfer portal. What do you have to say about that, and how tough is it to see those guys potentially going out the door? You know, really don't have much to say until the portal window opens. Um, obviously, as I've said before around here, the portal giveth and it taketh away. And, and again, this is the landscape of college football. This is uh, this is where we are with it. Um we, we understand it. We know that we'll lose certain guys, uh, a certain percentage of guys every year, but we'll also have an opportunity to improve our team because of the transfer portal. So, um, you know, anytime players make decisions to leave the program, they all do it for their own, own selfish reasons or their own intentional reasons. And, and we wish them well as we've done anybody else that's uh, started here in our program and made the decision to leave. We wish them nothing but the best. We'll go to Emmett next. Mike, it seemed like uh, a lot of moving pieces with, you know, the playoff committee and everything deciding, you know, who's going to be available. What were the conversations like to get into the Music City Bowl and how did that all kind of come together? Yeah, you know, for, it really starts with the, the the four playoff teams and, you know, with the way championship Saturday went and there were some 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 upsets and some teams that that moved up and down. Um, you know, for me, the, the Music City Bowl is uh, elevates our program. Uh, it's a, a December 30th bowl game. It's one that, you know, I know our players are excited about getting down to Nashville, which is a great football city. Um, you know, we've got a, a few players that are on TV playing now that uh, are there with the Tennessee Titans, uh, Chico Cuanco and Jalen Duncan uh, that are there in that area. So we're looking forward to getting down there. Um, I know it's a great bowl game and it's a great opportunity against an, an SEC opponent. Go to uh, Wes Brown next, Wes. Yeah, Coach, you've um, sort of, you know, built this program, obviously, over the last few years. And now you kind of see the fruits of that with, you know, guys from the beginning like Talia, Bo Braid, players like that kind of kind of reaching the end of their careers here. Um, what does it kind of mean to you and, and say about, you know, the the culture and all that in the program with, you know, some of these guys planning to play when, you know, you've, you've every every team's had opt outs and, you know, transfers and all that kind of stuff. But but seeing some guys stick through for the the four or five years of the program fully, fully growing. Yeah, I mean, it's unique now because with the opportunities that, that kids have because of the new rules and the, the new landscape that we're, we're amongst, you know, to see guys finish things that they started 
uh, is it's rewarding and it's great to see. You know, we want to put the best product on the field that we can. Um, as we've always said, you know, the our the end of our 23 season was the Rutgers game. This is really the start of the 24 campaign for the Maryland football family. And, you know, we've got some young players that will have opportunities to come in and, 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 and kind of make a name for themselves. But we also have some veteran players that want to leave the right way and, and have one more opportunity to go out um, with the, a bowl win, which will give us our third straight um, win in, in a bowl game, which is something that I think – uh, for their legacies that they'd like to see happen. We'll go to George next, George. Hey, Mike, how's it going? George, what's up, buddy? Not much. Congratulations on the selection. Uh, I was curious if, you know, this is football's version of Selection Sunday. Do, would you get a chance to to watch any of the games yesterday? And do you kind of view this now that the season's over, like a lot of fans are, where you're looking at the pieces falling during the day? Like, how do you – what do you do on a, on a bowl announcement day? Are you fully almost in preparation mode for who the opponent's going to be? Yeah, no, you know, for, for, for us, number one, you know, we've knew that there's about two or three games that we would have an opportunity to be a part of. We started doing preliminary scouting reports on some of the potential teams and things that we, we read and heard about, but you know, it's really, we don't have any control over it and it's how kind of things slot and fall. But I knew that because of, of our team and the way this team has fought, um, you know, having an explosive offense at times defensively being one of the, 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 the more, uh, the more improved defenses that we would be attractive to a lot of different bowls uh, with the type of players we have. And so uh, to have the opportunity to be selected. And if you look at the pecking order, um, in which they are able to select. I mean, it speaks volumes to what the Music City Bowl thought about our program to pick us because they had opportunities to pick others and, and they chose to pick us. And we hope Turp Nation shows up and, and responds the right way by showing up down in Nashville supporting us. And a quick follow-up to that. You, you mentioned, you know, the, where the bowl game is on December. December 30th, based on some of the other places you were projected to go, that essentially gives you another full week of, of preparation for this game. How are you? I know you, as you said, you know, using this to start the next season, that extra six, seven days of preparation, how are you able to better use that than if you had to play a game earlier in the month of December? Yeah, we we, we typically try to, I mean, this becomes another spring ball for us, but what we try to do is with our players and, and you know, we want them to enjoy this journey of, of preparing for the bowl game. Uh, you know, we, we get back to the base fundamentals of the game. We, we reinstall our systems, um, which gives the younger players that maybe didn't have as much impact on the season. Now this is their opportunity. So um, for us, it's all teaching. Um, it's, it's continuing to develop the players in our program uh, that choose to play in the game. And, and I know for us, we've got some talented young players that I'm excited to kind of see them and their growth over the next, you know, 20, 25 days of, of work that we'll get, but we'll also have enough time to get them a break and, and get them recovered so that we can put the best product on the field that we possibly can. And we'll go to Chris Heidel next, Chris. Hey, Coach. It's Chris Idell from Perfect Radio in Baltimore. Uh, congratulations on the uh, trip to Nashville. Uh, the last couple of years you've been in New York, you've been to uh, Charlotte. What does this mean for the program to expand the brand of Maryland football going to Nashville and these different bowl games to help recruiting? Yeah, I mean, it, it's great. You know, Nashville is a city that I'm pretty familiar with. I haven't spent time in, in Tuscaloosa. Um, understanding that Nashville is a great, great city. Um, uh, it's a place that I know for our fans, an opportunity, you know, not just to see a great football great, a game against an SEC opponent in Auburn, but also, you know, to take in, um, you know, Music City down there. And and so to me, I think it's a win-win. Um, obviously, it elevates our program. You know, when you play games as close to January 1 as you can, uh, those extra practices, but also, you know, it elevates in the way our program is viewed. You know, I think it's great for, for, for us uh, here at the university. And if I can follow up real quick, uh, Coach Freeze uh, was here um, down at Liberty University. Now he's there at Auburn. Um, have you ever coached against him? And what type of coach is he? And what does he bring to the SEC? Yeah, in, in 2016, when, when Coach Freeze was at Ole Miss, I was there as an analyst at Bama and was – 
a part of seeing that. I actually was part of a, we interviewed Coach Freeze for a position as well. So I've gotten to know him over the years. And, you know, he's one of those guys that did it the right way. I mean, he came up through the ranks as a high school coach, really successful high school coach there in, 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 in Tennessee and, and, and climbed the ladder and really has done a tremendous job. Uh, great offense of mine. Um, a guy that I got a lot of respect for him and, and the job that that he does. And, and and I know that they're finishing their first year under him. But, you know, there's no doubt that he'll recruit at a high level and that he'll have his team um, continue to get better and better. All right, we'll just take two or three more. We'll go to Judith next. Judith. Hi. Um, obviously, this might have been kind of early, but I don't, you just had to mention it. So that's what I was going to ask. Do you have any thoughts on Auburn overall? Or I mean, elaborate more, I guess, on playing an SEC, SEC team? Because I don't know the last time Maryland has faced like an SEC team. Yeah, I don't, I couldn't tell you the last time we faced an SEC team either. But, you know, obviously, you know, the SEC and the Big Ten are two of the, the top conferences, if not the two top conferences in all of uh, college football. So anytime you have an opportunity to compete against the SEC, um, it's it, it's something that's important. Um, you know, Auburn being the opponent, talented team, uh, they recruited a really high level. They're, as I said earlier, Hugh Freeze and his staff are guys that I, I have a lot of respect for them as football coaches and having faced uh, him, Hugh as an assistant when he was the head coach at Ole Miss, um, have gotten to know him over the years that um, it, this will be a great opportunity for the Terps um, to go up against a, a, a great SEC opponent like uh, Auburn. Uh, go ahead, Ed Lee. Mike, I apologize, but I have a non-bowl related question for you. Um, I talked to Anthony Pecorella and he talked about how grateful he was that you and your wife and the program reached out to him when he was battling Burkitt lymphoma. Can I ask uh, why you why that was important to you, for you to reach out to him? I mean, I think one that you know, it's 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 so unfortunate where we are with the the landscape of college football, where you know these teams are, are you know, kids come into programs and leave. Uh, for their, their own different reasons and coaches leave. But, you know, I'm one of those guys that once we recruit you and you've been a part of this program, regardless of whether you finish here uh, or you finish here, you know, I think it's important that these are not just four-year relationships, but the next 40 year. And, you know, Anthony did some great things for us here uh, in our program, played a part in helping us create the foundation that we are on. You know, anytime you see a family member go through some tough times and health crises like Anthony just faced, uh, you know, it's important for us to support. And, you know, I know our family reached out to support. Um, the Maryland football family has always been behind him, his former uh, brothers and his teammates that uh, played with him here at Maryland. It was important when we found out about it that we got him. And, and, and I know our specialist created a, 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 a GoFundMe deal with, you know, for every kick made to raise money to help uh, with support Anthony and his call. So um, it's a win-win, and we're just grateful that that Peck has come through this thing um, the right way. And if I could ask a follow-up, he rang the bell on November 29th, meaning that he's cancer-free. What does that mean to the program to, for you guys to hear that? I mean, it just means that our prayers have been answered. Um, you know, to see him go through the things he went through and to see he, him battle, uh, we're not surprised that's the same type of uh, leadership and the same type of culture that that we've instilled here in our program and and Anthony's a byproduct of the battle of fight answer and to be able to win the the battle is, is great and we're all grateful for him thank you Mike all right we'll take our last yep. one from from Barun Coach, uh, you've obviously been on one side of the Iron Bowl with Alabama any extra motivation going into this game with Auburn no, not at all, man. You know, my biggest battle will be at the house. You know, I got a daughter that graduated. She has a, a Auburn degree hanging up in, in our house. And, um, you know, I spent time, obviously, at Alabama. So, you know, I just got to be careful for not game planning and taking anything home that she might be able to to decipher and and, and kind of, you know, give them any edge. But, no, it's it, it's great opportunity. I mean, Auburn is one of those programs that when you think of college football, they're part of that pageantry of college football. Uh, it'll be a great opportunity, a great town being in Nashville, you know, the trans perfect 
Music City Bowl is a, a, a step up for us uh, in terms of elevating our program. And I know we're all excited for this opportunity. All right. Thank you, Coach. And as a reminder, guys, we'll have our bowl meeting.